they were very bold in their approach they were stars of that movie and they wanted to be the stars of that movie Firstly, a huge congratulations on your documentary, Angry Young Men. I think it was such a beautiful series, and I watched it last night, and it really struck a chord with me because I've grown up watching their films. Oh, so, hey, uh, so, so, as, so as obvious as the question really sounds, I mean, um, how? What was the reason for you to make this documentary? Um, it was like I really like the two. Uh, subjects very much. I like how they have lived their life. I like their personalities, and I think they uh, are very inspiring as people. And they've done such an. They have a huge body of work which uh, today's generation knows nothing about. So it was also an attempt to introduce them to that, and also to revisit those times, the cinema of the seventies. So it was all these things together. I think. So, sure. and I think when you decided to make uh, the doc, um, what do you think your expectations were before making it? And I think having gone through that whole process of it, how satisfied do you feel about it? So when I started it, of course, it was about a lot more things. I mean, because it was about almost every film they have written, and it was about every incident that has happened and every event in their life. But as I kept shooting, I mean, I shot it over three years, and it kind of started revealing itself to me and i also realized that there is a lot of information available about them on the internet so what mm. is interesting is them as people the humanity of it of each one of them and what makes them the writer and the artist they are so that kind of happened as we kept shooting so i think that is how the choices were made and for me like leaving out a certain film or including a certain film, it all happened as part of that process. Sure. Uh, I think when it comes to Salim Javed's story, I mean, it's so fascinating because I don't think there's any more revolutionary of a writing duo in our industry other than them. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, especially towards the third episode, we kind of get a bit more insights into their psyche, into obviously why they split up and stuff like that. Uh, did you feel like also there was a certain um, pressure on you as well as a director of you maybe not being able to go into that zone of actually really dissecting into why they split up? Was there like a no-go area for you as a, as a filmmaker throughout this process and how did you cope with that? No, it was not a no-go area at all. I mean, it was just that it's been such a long time and... I didn't want to get into what happened that day kind of things. You know, I mean, that is a bit a reality for me personally. So mm -hmm. I wanted to go more into the bigger reason of why they split up, which was creative differences. Their film's not doing well. There was fatigue in the way they were working with each other. For me, those were more interesting than saying that what happened that day. After 43, 44 years, I don't know. I don't find it so interesting. I find it actually trivializes the whole thing, in my opinion, which is why there was no, absolutely no embargo from their side. But that was my choice. Oh, really? Yeah, no, it's interesting that you say that because I think it's just interesting because as a journalist, right, because we obviously analyze a lot of things and we kind of do our research on things a lot. And it's just really fascinating because obviously when you hear about Salman and the Khan family and how they've kind of, used to mix with the Akhtar family when they were kids. Um, and then obviously the fact that, you know, Salman has never really worked in a Farhan Akhtar, you know, film or a Zoya Akhtar film. It's just so fascinating how, you know, that sort of has trickled down. I think that's why I was like very fascinated to know more because I feel like, you know, it kind of talks about that. I mean, you know, the documentary does sort of talk about the sort of growing up nature and, um, you know, how they spent their childhoods as well. So I think that's why I found it like, oh, you know, was it, you know, ever a sort of subject of fascination for you? Because it also talks a lot more about the the psychology, you know, and the sort of um, emotional sort of side of them as well. So was there ever that thought that ever crossed your mind as well? Of course it did. And we've spoken a lot about it. I mean, I also know what happened that day. But was it so interesting to put it in the documentary after 40 years? 
I didn't feel that. And I didn't feel that the whole connection between the families is also dependent on that. You know, you have a creative collaboration which breaks up. And then, of course, both of them kind of struggled to make a name for themselves for some time. Of course, Javed Sir started writing lyrics, etc. And uh, ja uh, Selim Sir made Naam almost after four years. So, of course, that affects the families. But is it... That, for me, is interesting, which we talk about too. But what happened that day, who said what to whom, somehow is more sen sensational and more... I don't know. I mean... That is not so interesting. It, it kind of re like I wanted to do it gracefully. I didn't want it to be about when they were younger, you know, they said this to each other. I don't know. I mean, personally, that is not something that was of the most exciting, was the most exciting. The distillation mm -hmm. of the thought was the distillation that, okay, you know, we didn't like to work together anymore. That was interesting. The analysis of that. Sure. sure. And I think, uh, Namitra, I mean, you've worked in this industry for many years as an editor. Um, You've um edited some very amazing films, actually. Uh, and I think people in the people that you've interviewed in, 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 in the documentary, I'm sure you've known them for a while Um, and because you've been around for a while. What was it like when you kind of came face to face with them for this documentary? Because here it wasn't a... A, you know, a PR interview or a PR strategy. It was literally their life, you know, and you're speaking to them about their life and you're speaking to them about something which is still quite personal because film and cinema is still very personal. What did you discover about the artists that you've known for a while uh, whilst filming this documentary? So I shot with them for, like, I, I think I mentioned to you, uh, over three years. So for me, it was a discovery. With everybody else, I've shot only once. It's only with them that I've shot like seven, eight times over three years. So so in that sense, I discovered them by and by. And I didn't know, know them really before that. I knew some other people that I've shot with. Like I know Zoya because I worked with her. I had already done three projects with her as an editor. I knew Reema because she was involved. Uh, Farhan maybe. But not really know, know them. Anybody else. So... Right. But for me, the main interests were these two and their interviews are what I used to base everything else on. Like they were the base layer for me. And then if I asked other people things to kind of make the story bigger. So that is how it was. So when I came first, like the first time I met them, I was a little intimidated, I would be honest, because uh, both of them are big personalities and also they were you know, like, oh, what new thing are you going to ask us and all those things. But because we shot so many times, we got, like, they really opened up and they also gave, you know, that space to me to be able to ask anything. And do you know what really fascinates me the most about documentary filmmaking is that uh, I think the real challenge actually does come. See, with fictional, you still have that liberty and that freedom to use whatever visual that you think about and add that in. Uh, whereas with uh, documentary filmmaking, you know, you have archives, you have clips, you have reality, and essentially you're framing reality. Um, you've, I believe you've also edited another documentary, which was quite a harrowing one at that. It was quite an intense one, House of Secrets. Um Obviously, the sort of tone, the story of that is very significantly different from Angry Young Men. But how has that really uh, played a big role in terms of your vision as a storyteller and telling true stories and using the visual medium to do so? Actually, I've done more than one documentary. I started my editing career also with documentaries. Sure, and, sure. Uh, I did five documentaries before I did my first feature film, Oye Lucky Lucky Way, back in 2008. And uh, I really enjoy documentaries because I feel they're so close to life and they give you so much fodder to use in fiction, you know, because what happens, I think, once you get into the film business, you kind of start living in a bubble. And documentaries give you that space to really explore life in a different way with people you usually wouldn't meet or hang out with. Uh, 
so i find them really fascinating and it's very selfish for me as a filmmaker to keep going back to documentaries because i feel they refresh me they rejuvenate me and help make my fiction work better so in that sense it uh, it helps but and i think also being an editor you kind of go with the fact that you work with whatever you have right so i think that also that attitude helps that okay i have all of this now how do i tell the story with it of course i had a very able editor with me uh, who helped me because she was more grounded than me for the first time i was the director and i was uh, getting very conscious about mm -hmm. what this one mm -hmm. uh that i have spent so much time shooting this so we have to use it you know so it helped to have a very objective editor helped and and also i think the sort of films that you've you've edited i mean you've had your sort of fair share of doing a lot of like i mean you've done a film i think you've also edited fan yeah. um edited quite a few f variety of films you've done kahani you've edited uh <laughs> jab tak hai jaan also so i think the sort of experience you've had in editing is 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 so so intriguing to me because these are all stories which are still quite rooted if you think about it right like they're still talking about the common man i mean ban baja barat is is a is a prime example of that um i think even love sex or dhoka you've also edited as well if i'm not yeah. mistaken so i also acted in it <laughs> <laughs> wow that's amazing so you know again when it comes to 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 reality do you feel like because you've kind of like you said oh you lucky like you as well because it's kind of in that tone of it being like a a common person story do you feel like that's come very useful to you when it comes to you being behind the camera now and one and deciding of what goes where and how to fit a certain scene where as well yes yes i mean i've equally done star driven films also so i think it it all adds up it all helps in the sense that you know you 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 kind of find yourself in corners and then you figure out ways to get out of it you know so as a storyteller so i think that is the notion that really helps that's the idea that really helps that okay every time i'm in a corner i feel okay i will find figure out a way to get out of it so yeah that comes with uh, you know the craft is something that keeps getting honed as you work on it it's a karat vidya as they say so the more you do the better you get at it so you know you just and I, and i want to pick up on something that you just mentioned that you know when you come into the industry uh, it becomes a bit of a bubble you become a bit lost in a bubble and i think that's a very in intriguing point that i've heard from a lot of other actors that i've interviewed and other filmmakers that i've interviewed uh narmada has there ever been like a dichotomy for you in your life where you know you're kind of in a way split between this uh this this image that you know you're kind of living by after working and entering this industry versus the person and the you know the aspirants that you once were before you entered the industry has there ever been that sort of a situation in your life and how have you dealt with it i have i have felt it many times i usually deal with it by taking a long break which i have done at many points in my career because i feel that i don't have anything to give anymore you know i've just been working working because in the first 9 years of my career as an editor i did some i don't know more than 20 films so it was a lot of work and i felt very burnt out and i felt that okay i don't have time to uh, infuse myself with new energy new thoughts new life experiences so i took a break and then when i came back i felt much rejuvenated and i think it shows in my work also when when i have taken that time out i have like filled my cup again you know so i think that for me is very interesting uh, not interesting it's very important to do as an artist that you have to keep going away fill your cup and come back and then put pour yourself in like for me this was because it was my first i think it was just so easy to pour myself completely into it you know there is nothing else i used to think about and you know i've often talked about this whole notion of nostalgia like this wave of nostalgia really taking over mm. uh, in terms of the contents that we're seeing in cinema but i think if there's any medium that really has fulfilled that that is actually documentary 
uh, storytelling. Obviously, we had the romantics uh, last year, even Cinema Marte Dam Tak on Prime, which I thought was excellent. And I absolutely loved that. Now we've obviously got Angry Young Men. Um, do you feel like um, because the industry, especially Hindi cinema, is changing so exponentially, it's kind of going through this, I don't want to use the word identity crisis, but it's trying to find its new wave of storytelling and its new sort of door, you get there. Uh, people are latching on to stories like Angry Young Men, like Romantics, like Cinema Marte Dam Tak, because we're kind of exploring unfamiliar territory now in the industry and in life generally as well. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that could be a factor that uh, you're trying to figure out. But I think a bigger thing for me is the fact that you want to keep an archive. You want to archive what all you know, has been done before. Like in Angry Young Men, I mean, there are so many people in the 20s who don't know about their work. So there is that hunger or that need that, okay, you know, uh, I mean, they are aging. So this is a good time to put it out and to introduce people, younger people to their work. Even with the romantics, I mean, it coincided with the 50 years of Yashrat Studio. Yeah, and true. You want to say that, okay, we have 50 years behind us. We've done all these amazing, great films and we, we have such a huge uh, body of work and we want you to know about it. So I think it's also a mix of that. It's not just coming from an identity crisis. It's also coming from the building body of work, the filmography, the fact that you're in a position now to be able to document it and keep an archive for the younger generations and pass it on. Now, I don't know if, if if you felt, I mean, I'm sure you must have felt this, but like, I mean, even though Salim Javid's sort of stories were much before my time when I was born, but I grew up watching Shole and Zanjeev. So for me, their stories and their films play a very pivotal part of as to why I've warmed up so much to Hindi cinema. Um, now, as nostalgic as I felt, um, I would like to know for you, how much did it feel like a younger number are feeling very proud of this of this of this series because obviously i'm sure you must have had your experiences growing up with their works as well so did you feel like it kind of satisfied your inner child as well somehow whilst working on this project yeah, because i think somewhere i have the same kind of story as them i mean though i've not achieved that kind of uh, success as them but uh, I am an outsider. I did not know anyone when I came here. I couldn't even have imagined back then when I used to watch these films on Doordarshan that one day I'll be interacting with these people. I mean, it was not even part of my big plan, you know. But I always thought that, okay, I, I, I tell stories well and that is what I want to do and slowly and slowly built upon that. So, yeah, it was quite a surreal moment for me that when the trailer came out and it was out there in the world. And I was thinking, wow, you know, from that time when I saw Shole first, it's exactly, uh, that was 1994. So this is exactly 30 years later. So it was amazing. It was a surreal moment. And I was, I, yeah, I felt really happy about it. That's amazing. Well, look, I think it's wonderful that you've now like sort of made your directorial debut. I think it's very promising. And I think the sort of body of work that you've had, um, it's 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 pretty remarkable to sort of see this journey. Um, what sort of stories are you really interested in telling? And is documentaries, uh, because like you said, you've had previous experiences with them as well. Is that necessarily a medium that you definitely like to explore more going in the future as well? Uh, sure, but next I want to do a fiction. I think I'm feeling charged to do a fiction now and I don't want to limit myself to either form. I mean, I love both equally, so uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. I will, hopefully I will do both in the future, but next up, definitely a fiction. And is there anything that we can look forward to in the near future? I mean, I'm pitching, so till it materializes, I shouldn't jinx it. So <laughs> let's hope it happens soon. Look, I think it's wonderful, Namrata. I mean, I think for your first, uh, for your first directorial and that to a documentary on two illustrious and revolutionary writers like Salim and Javid Saab, I think honestly it was so so wholesome to to watch that. It felt like a very warm hug, very very oddly for me. It it felt very personal as well. Um, and I think it's it's wonderful to just see that how 
we've always been talking about their works, but even now it's literally immortalized through this documentary. Years will go by, but we will always come back and see the smiling faces of Salim Saab and hearing Javed Saab's wisdom and his art as well uh, through this documentary. So thank you for doing that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing some more amazing work from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very sweet of you to say that. And I mean, my whole intention was to, you know, touch people with it more than just swamp them with all the work they have done. So it makes me happy when people say that it was warm. Yeah, no, I definitely. I think you definitely delved into the emotional quotients very well, actually, especially when it came to like, because I mean, I love Salman a lot. And I think it was so nice to just sort of see a few more personal pictures and you know hearing Salman's uh, like sort of insights as well it was beautiful it was really beautiful even Honey Ma'am as well to hear her her views as well I think it was very important so I'm glad that you did that for sure okay thank you Wonderful. awesome thank you thank you Namrata thank you so much bye bye